Okay, so we're going to push in there and we're going to do a new part. So new component. And we're going to call this side apron. I should really, let me see if apron is one P or two Ps. It's just one of those words I can never get. That and available. No matter how old I get, I can't spell available. It looks like it's one P. So I got it. Okay, so here we go. We're sketching on the side. And I, so we have our side apron part created. It's here in our tree now. Every time we add a feature, a sketch, our tree, our body, it just continues to grow longer, but it allows us to find things. So here, our tabletop, again, body is, and we click on that. That's our tabletop. And then front, back apron if we click on bodies we have body one which is the front and body two which is the back so the more features you add the more um, the longer your tree is going to get and again i'm not speaking from an expert on fusion 360 as i'll say it i don't understand half the commands um, i'm just speaking on 3d modeling knowledge altogether so here we go so i used another two and I hope this is snapping, we'll see. But basically we're gonna use existing geometry in order to make our side apron. So we have our front, we have our back. There's really not much we have to do besides um, use existing geometry in order to get it to work. So we're going to assume that when we take our screws, we screw it in this way. Um, I know conventionally, actually we should follow what I did in the 3D what I did in the build video. So we'll just subtract here. So we'll go back. This is why you love 3D modeling. So it's 46 inches. So if I remember correctly, I put the screws in through the sides. So we need to account for the two by four. So the two by four is one and a half and one and a half. So three. So instead of 46, it needs to be 43. So if we go here to the front back, activate that come here instead of it being a can you do a reference dimension we're gonna see 46 this dimension would over constrain yes i want driven so this dimension is not driving anything we can't physically use it to change our driven our driving dimensions are still the ones so as I said, in order to account for the other two by fours, we can't have 46, it needs to be 43. So that needs to be uh, a one, sorry, a, oh, hold on, my keyboard's messing up here. Okay, so instead, we need to add one and a half to each side. So it needs to be two and a half and two and a half. And then that'll be 43. So now we've, we've created space for one inch overhang all around. So when we say one inch overhang, if we go ahead and inspect and click here and here, that's one inch from this face to this face. And it says it right there. Someone please let me know down in the uh, in the comments how I deselect a face. So by that I mean if I want to deselect this one, number two, and click here. Oh, never mind. I just figured that out. Okay, so here we go. So back to the side apron, activate, and we should have our sketch at least started. So if we edit it. We need to, we can use our existing geometry. So we're sketching on this face, but we can use these points here in order to draw our side aprons. So there, so there. And it's down there so slightly. From there to there. So we're not fully constrained. The model can, the sketch can still move. So that's not what we want. When these are faded blue, it looks like it's not constrained. And when it's black, it's fully constrained. So you're looking for your sketch to usually be black. 
And the reason why is because I'm not always going to be the one modeling for Neil, the garage guy. We may, you know, bring someone on in the future. So if somebody ever comes back and needs to make a change to the simple workbench, I want them to easily be able to make changes. I, I don't want to assume that I'm going to be the only one making these changes. So here, if I click on coincident there, I, I need to really Google that and see why I can't go point to point. Can I? Okay, so now that turned from blue to black and we can't drag it. I always just check this. It's just a sanity check for me to be able to know whether or not it's moving and it's not. So it's fully defined and it's all black. Okay, so originally I said uh, a few minutes ago that we would sketch this way or extrude that way. We're not doing that. That's the whole reason we moved from 46 to 43 so that in theory we can sketch and extrude out that way basically. So here we're going to do an extrude of this sketch. And if someone can let me know how I grab everything in just one click, Right? I've noticed that when I extrude here, it does half of it, but it doesn't do this little small part either. So if you can let me know what I'm supposed to be pressing in order to grab all of it, that would be great so that they're not two profiles. It's all one profile. So that here, and then it's a two by four, so one and a half. Okay. So there you go. We have our one and a half. And then we're going to mirror again, because why not? So here we can take our create, our mirror. We're going to click this as the body. And then the mirroring plane, we're going to mirror that around here. So once I click this plane, we should see the other side apron, the one on the, technically that's the left. We should see that pop up. So one, two, click. Yeah, that did not click correctly. Sorry, I didn't grab the plane. Um, let me rotate it, and there you go. So here we go. So now we have left, right, front, back. And if we activate the assembly again, you can see here that it's starting to form. And now we have our aprons as such. And this isn't a rotating assembly like the fold-up assembly table. So now, we're going to uh, create our legs. And we're only going to create one leg and we're going to mirror it around. 